last time we worked on this and we are going to work on this some more. We're going to paint this whole scene here and you have all your supplies here. I'm just going to move them off to the side. And what I'd like you to do um, is with your glue stick, um, get a brand new double page spread and glue it on the left side. So I'm just going to glue it on in here. Really burnish it down. And then I will be ready to paint some more on here. Oh, good question. Today we're using just a flat brush and I have some up at my desk if you need them. Although, okay. Yeah, it's not very flat. Push it together. You probably aren't cleaning it well enough with soap to get all that paint down in here. Um, we want to review, how did we get these, this green here? Um, this hill green right here. How did we get it? Yep, we did grass green plus mountain blue equals hill green. So remember our grass green is our fallow green plus yellow and our mountain blue is blue plus white. So I want you to mix up a grass green and a mountain blue and then make up your hill color. So let's do that. Oh yeah. Hill green, grass green, plus mountain blue. And when you mix up your grass green, mix up a little bit more. We're gonna be using this all period today. I'm gonna put, a, I'm gonna put two, two, almost two Hershey kisses there. Maybe not quite. One Hershey kiss. Mix up my grass green. And once I have that mixed, I can even put that little swatch there just to kind of remind me. Grass green here. Got my grass green there, cleaning my brush, washing, drying. And then I'm gonna make a mountain blue. Mountain blue is a lot of white and a little blue. It's a little darker than the sky. Okay, so making my mountain blue here. Make it a little darker than the sky. Really get it mixed in. It's just blue and white. I'm gonna put it just right there, so I, okay. Blue and white. And then I'm going to mix them together to get our hill green. So I'm going to just put them right in the middle, scoop them up, clean your brush in between. Dry it. Get some of that good grass green. 
get a good amount. We need a good amount here because we need to paint the rest of this hill in here. The rest of the um, canvas paper is gonna be painted with this hill green. And it doesn't have to mix, here's my hill green. It doesn't have to um, match the last hill green perfectly. We don't care about perfect matches. Some of this is gonna be actually covered up, so it's no big deal. That's my hill green right there. A little bit bluer. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that hill green and we're gonna make another set of hills um, in front of this set, but make them pretty close. So um, I'm gonna just maybe make a dip down. Maybe I'll make a valley first. And then maybe another little valley. Okay, and then pull that all the way down, the whole canvas paper. And coat the whole canvas paper with that hill green. And first I'm pulling straight down and then because I don't want the brush strokes to be um, vertical, after I get it on there, I'm going over with my brush horizontally. Put in a nice coat of hill green. <clears throat> So part of painting is that you have to be okay with covering up some of what you painted before to make it look realistic um, and layered, right? Because between me and a mountain or you and a mountain is hundreds of objects, right? Trees and cars and houses and all that kind of stuff. Um, thousands, possibly millions. So. You have to be okay with um, there being some um, overlap and some covering up. Okay, so I'm just getting my hill green on here. And then we'll put in the highlight and the shadow like we did last time. We're going to get started with distinguishing this hill from this up here. Um, from the back hill. And the way we're going to do that is with our hill green, we're going to add a little bit of yellow. The little yellow on my palette. A little bit. We're just going to make our hill green a little yellow. So green plus yellow. And we're just going to put that on the tops and the left side. So we have the sun coming here. So on the left side of all the hills, you're going to get a is going to get this just like a little bit of sunshine um, on it. And it might not show up here on my camera. But in person, I can see it. Yellow is a hard one because um, it just doesn't show up as well. Um, and if it's too much or don't like where you put it, you can just go back in, you just wipe off. Don't, I wouldn't even wash. I would just wipe off your brush and go back in with the hill green and you can blend it in and make it, um, a little bit better, right? So I'm just kind of going back and forth between the hill green 
and the um, till green plus yellow. And if I'm going to also put in some of the valleys. And to do that, I'm not even washing my brush, just picking up the fallow green, just a little, little, little bit of fallow green, and defining where my hill is or my valley is. So, like my valley is going to come right down here. Maybe it's going to flatten out right here. I'm just going to pull it off to the side. And if it's still wet, that's really awesome. If that's like wet and wet. If it's not still wet, we can just go back over with some hill green. This is just the fallow green from the bottle. And it just makes it look like, um, makes it look like there's a depression or a lower area. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, and then you could even have one going the other way if you wanted. I could have my valley going this way, kind of come. Just think about where would the light hit? Don't have some darkness over here. Just a subtle, because some of this is going to be um, painted on anyway. I'm going to paint over it in just a few minutes. Okay, and then we're going to go in with um, just the fallow green, just the regular fallow green from the bottle for our little suggestion of trees on the ridge line. And what I did is I wiped off my paint. I did not wash it. I just wiped it off, wiped it off until like my bristles get that flat chisel edge. Then I can go in with a little bit of fallow green right from the bottle again. And I can put in some suggestion of trees along that ridge line. And remember, trees grow, I mean, you could have one tree, but they probably grow multiple trees. And some of them are taller and some of them are shorter. And this is just really fine detail. I'm gonna zoom in. Here's the fine detail, right? And just touch. And you can have like a grove of trees here all on this part here. They can come down the ridge line. Just think if you were a tree, just like Bob Ross says, like, well, if you were a tree, where would you want to live, right? And then maybe up on this ridge line, this next ridge line here, which is very hard to see, I'll put some more trees here. I'm using the fallow green right out of the bottle. And just the very edge of my flat brush. Maybe I'll have some coming down this ridge line. I'm just using that flat, straight chisel edge and just touching. And they're not all the same height. That is important to make it look realistic. Can have a whole grove of trees here.
have the whole mountain or the whole hill covered in trees if you wanted to. Just some trees in different areas. Okay, so go ahead and finish up some trees and then we're going to start actually with some the foreground and some trees in the foreground. We're going to make some trees down here in kind of perspective. It's going to end up looking like that. So trees farther away, closer, closer. The first thing we need to do is just put some grass down in here. So I'm just going to take my grass green. I have not cleaned my brush. Grass green, and I'm just going to tap it in here. It's going to kind of even fade away a little bit because um, this green that we have is the hill green, which was made up of grass green, right? So I'm just going up a little bit to the right. You don't have to draw a straight line or anything like that. Um, so because the grass green kind of fades in here, once I get a layer of grass green, I'm going to come in just with that fallow green. And if you do it quick enough, they'll kind of blend a little bit on top of each other. Let me show you what I mean. So now here's my fallow green. And at first it looks like weird, but if I go over it enough times, it'll just kind of look like grass. I'll just give it some texture. So just putting in some fallow grain. And again, some of this we're going to cover up anyway. Some of it we won't. So um, our tree color is actually going to be yellow plus black. Remember that olive green? Okay, how we made olive green. So on my palette here, I'm going to mix yellow, like a, like a big chocolate chip or a small, um maybe even a Hershey kiss because we're going to use a, a good amount of this for the trees. And a little bit of black. Mix that up. It's going to be an olive green. And you still want it to be green. You do not want it to be dark, okay? But you definitely don't want it to be yellow. You want it to get enough of that black in there to make it an olive green. And again, I want that chisel. I'm just waiting for the bell to ring. I want that chiseled edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper towel. And I'm just going to wipe until all the bristles are aligned in like a chisel straight edge. Yeah, I don't know if you can see how dark mine is. 
But if you think it's too light, add some dark to add some black to it for sure. Okay, now this part I really want you to watch me do. I want you to not do it. I want you to watch where I place these things because the placement is important. Okay, so the first tree is going to be farther away from us. So it's going to start in the hills right here, the lower hills. And I'm just going to pull straight down to about there. The second tree, I'm going to go up into the upper hills and I'm going to pull it quite a ways down. The third tree, I'm going to go all the way up into the mountains. I'm going to pull it all the way down to the bottom of the canvas paper. Okay. So go ahead and put in with that olive green, one, two, three. They are not the same. They don't end and start at the same point. This is the shortest one. Then this gets taller and longer and that gets taller and longer. Yeah, all the way down. Cause it's really close to you. It's gonna end up looking like this all the way. That's okay, just add more. Okay, we're going to move on now. So we just put in the shadow here with the olive green on the two back trees. You don't need to put it on the front tree. There's no, if the tree goes down farther past the canvas. Okay, um, but we need to put in some lighter uh, green to give it more green, make it pop out a little bit more. So um, it kind of depends on you and what you want to do. I think I'm going to go in with a little bit of grass green. Yeah, you could go in with a little fallow green, but if it was just a small amount on your brush. And I'm just going to go in and just put in some more green on top of those branches, but it should be so minimal that you can still see underneath it and see. Um, the branches underneath. So um, part of learning how to paint is learning to use less paint because beginners use just too much paint most of the time. And that's hard. That's a hard thing to learn. It, it You do learn it over time. Um, but if you're not, if that's not doing it for you, you can go in with the fallow green, just a little bit of fallow green. It would It would do the same type of thing. Yeah, I kind of like now the fallow green. Now that I tried it, I'm like, okay, yeah. So try try either of those. Yeah, both sides. So far, we're just doing both sides. You guys are awesome because you're asking good questions. That means that you're working on it. That's all a teacher can really ask for is your your effort, you got good effort in this class. Actually, all my classes on this project. Now we now all need to just dress up like Bob Ross for a day. Wouldn't that be fun to like um, paint one of his paintings with him? They're really hard though. So I don't, I don't know if I want you to do that because they're so hard. <laughs> Yeah, you've done one. Um, I have a Bob Ross costume. I was Bob Ross a few years ago for Halloween. It was a joke. It was a joke. People were telling me that I was like, that I was like, oh, happy trees and this and that. And I was like, okay, fine. So I bought a wig. I have a wig, a Bob Ross wig. And I have um, his beard. And I have, not his beard, but. Uh -huh. And I had a painting of um, a Bob Ross painting that I wore. Uh, no, uh, just like a landscape. He's known for his landscapes. And then I had, you know, the button down um, shirt that he always wears, jean shirt. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a picture of it. Yeah, you can just buy the costume. So, okay.
So I actually liked the fallow green. So you just don't know until kind of you try which one you, you like on top. The last thing we got to do on this, which is a, again, a less is more thing is we need to put in the highlights and we're not going to put in white and we're not going to put in um, light green. We're going to put mountain blue just a little bit. I'm not cleaning my brush, just the tiniest bit of mountain blue, like itty bitty amount. And just on the left side, right? Our sun is over here. And you can cross over, and it's just going to be on the tops. Just wherever the sun might catch, definitely on the top. And if you don't like it, don't worry, just let it dry and you can paint over it. Okay, you can paint over it, but I'm just putting a little bit on the tops. It's just gonna add that highlight. If it looks like a Christmas tree, that's good, right? That means it looks like a tree, right? I think that's good. You go. Yeah. So if you don't like some of the this bluey mountain white on there, you can go back in with any one of the colors. Maybe I'll go in with the olive green and just kind of lightly touch on top and it'll dull it a little bit if you don't like it. Yeah, and and you're not gonna look at your painting, like when you're done with your painting, you're not gonna look at it um, that close. Like right now you're really close, but yeah. Looks good. Let's see if I can do one of these here. If you are watching this on YouTube and are not in my high school classes, I would love your subscription. If you can click the like and subscribe buttons down below this video, then it will help other people to see the, my videos. I would be so grateful. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.